this video. Yeah. So once again, you're welcome to the day five of the trading bootcamp. Now, it's been a very wonderful experience for everybody who has participated. And I'm happy to have you. And I believe we all benefited a lot. I believe we all benefited a lot. Now, all those who subscribe to the bootcamp has been officially added to the VIP signal group as promised. And we've been taking profitable trades. We started making money too, as promised. So today is the last day of the bootcamp. So today I'm going to be talking about trading psychology. Why many persons know how to analyze chart, but they are not successful with trading. That will be the topic today. So you need to know how to manage your emotions when you're trading. Now, also be giving you success tips, things you should do and things you shouldn't do when it comes to cryptocurrency trading. Now, there were some lot of things they told us that are not actually correct, I see. One of them is buy the deep, buy the deep. Many people have lost money from buying the deep and the deep got deeper. You buy and you have got deeper. So at that particular point, it wouldn't be wise if you just jump and buy the deep. Now towards the end of the class, I will explain how to buy the deep and why you should not just buy every deep you see. So thank you for joining us once again. Um, I'm Prince Wee, Gerald, and I also want to welcome you to Trace City Academy. So welcome to the training and let's dive into the class. So first of all, what is psychology? Today is trading psychology. What is psychology? Now, psychology has to do with the scientific study of your minds and emotions. So psychology is the scientific study of someone's mind and emotions. And when you're talking about your mind and your emotion, we are talking about things that guide the way you act. So if I ask you, why do you do the things you do? There are factors that can make you do the things you do. Now, one of those factors is your emotions. So as a trader, if you have to be successful or if you must be successful, you must mind your emotion or manage your emotion. This is very key. Now, if you look at this chart properly, you will get to see that this chart right now, uh, okay, in, in the paid group, that's the signal group. I think I gave this signal, I gave this signal even before this dip happened. So if you notice, I might need to take it to the WhatsApp group for those who are in the group. I gave the buy signal. I told them to buy from 289 to 291, if I'm not mistaken, to sell rather. Now, our take profit was supposed to be 280. That's take profit one, to be 280. That was the signal I gave. As I, when I gave the signal, the market has not dropped. The market has not dropped. And what happened? Few hours later, I came up and I said, we should close this street. Few hours later, I came up to say, close this street. The reason why I say close this street was because I saw something some persons did not see. So I felt it would be wise for them to close at the moment because as I did, it was new trading. So we closed the trade. Now, the moment you close the trade, few hours later, it dropped down to our initial take profit. So at that point, I felt like, wow, if I have known, I wouldn't have asked the people to close the trade. That is psychology. Now, psychology has to do with your emotion. Now, at that particular point, the analysis was perfectly okay, 100% correct but the emotions made us to close the trade. And we did not win from this particular trade for those who close the trade. So what I'm trying to explain here is as a trader, you must know how to manage your emotions. You must know how to control yourself. Now, the first thing you must do as a trader is number one, especially when you're trading futures, you must ensure that you use your spare money. So when they tell you trade with your spare money, you must ensure you trade only with your spare money. Because our psychologies are factors. They are factor dependent on two things. One, things that has happened to us before. That's our past. Now, our surrounding environment can also determine the way we act or react to a particular thing. Now, for example, for many of us who did MMM, for some persons who did MMM and some other Ponzi scheme, they have vowed never to do any online thing again. But the question will not be, does it mean that online things are wrong? They are and scamming, no, but because they had that experience of losing their money, maybe with the first thing they did, 
they concluded that everything online was what was scanning. So they now have that history, that's their past, that is now affecting their present psychology and emotions towards online too. But online is the way now, so everybody has to embrace it. So at that particular point, for you to be successful, you must embrace managing your psychology properly. And one of the ways you can do that is to get rid of your past, things that has happened before. The first account you found that you blew it, that will create or generate fear in all your trading. So for you to be successful, you must get rid, you must fight your past before. Now, when you trade, you should trade with your spare money. That is the rule. The reason why they are saying trade with your spare money is because it's the money you can afford to lose. So when I say trade with only the money you can afford to lose, that is all called spare money. But unfortunately, we do not. I don't think there are just few persons who have spare money in this part of the world. There are just few persons who have spare money. Because you hardly see somebody who has a particular amount of money and he said that money is spare. I, I can easily throw it away. It's just few persons that can do that. So because of that, they now attach their emotion. It's like your whole life. Everything you're doing is tied to that your particular trick. So because that happens, then you can bound to do what? You can bound to close your trade early when you're not supposed to trade or when you're not supposed to close it. So rule number one, fund your account with only spare money. Now, many of us made a mistake of using all the money we had in this world to actually do what? To actually fund a trading account. So if we are losing, it's like we are losing the world. If we are gaining, we are happy at some point. But in trade, you must understand that trade is two sides. You don't get to win every day. It's not win, win, win. Sometimes it can be win, lose, lose. It can be win, lose, win, win, lose. So that is how it actually works. So you must ensure that you trade with only your spare money. That is how you will be successful. That's rule number one. Now, rule number two, you must always learn how to put yourself back in order. Now, by putting yourself back in order is when you give a wrong signal or you enter the wrong trade and it went against you, that doesn't mean you are not a professional trader. What that means is your analysis was right, but the market disobeyed your analysis. That is what it means. So it doesn't mean you're wrong. It means you're right, but the market at that particular point disagree with you and disobeyed your analysis. So you don't have to cry. You don't have to feel as if the world has ended for you. All you need to do is to what? Be proud of yourself, put yourself back in order, go back again and take another trade. So rule number one, ensure you fund the account with spare money. Rule number two, when the trade goes against you, put yourself back in order. Now the hardest thing to do is to direct people or give people financial advice. That's why when we talk about crypto, we always say this is not a financial advice. Because if you are giving a financial advice, then I should not lose my money. So because we don't want people to bet on our analysis or what we are predicting or what we are saying, we always attach that word, this is not a financial advice. Do your own research. The reason why we always say that is because we want to be what? We want you to be liable for every single action you take it. So if I say buy BNB, let's say for example, I say BNB is going to pump massively. At that particular point, I've already created this feeling that people should buy BNB because the price will appreciate. But if I tell you this is not a financial advice, for you to buy BNB first, you need to go and read to know why the BNB pump. So I'm trying to leave it at your own decision, at your own discretion to choose and be responsible for every action you take. For that reason, we say this is not a financial advice. So at times you see a quote, a tweet. Mostly we do that a lot. For example, CZ, that's the owner of Binance. To give a particular update and write, this is not a financial advice. That's NFA, not a financial advice. Do your own research. Why we want to do your own research is because anything that happens, you should be proud of your decision. So that's that. Then another thing you also need to know as a trader is trading is not a do or die affair. 
So at times you might lose, at times you might also win. So what you need to do is to keep that particular, just feel free when you're trading, do it as is fun. So when somebody tell you buy the deep, they say buy the deep, and you went ahead to buy the deep, and you discover that the market got deeper, even after you bought the deep. And you say, what happened? You said I should buy the deep, and the market got deeper. What is happening? At that particular point, you just jump into a particular conclusion without you knowing what to do. So if I am to buy the deep, for example, I am predicting, let's say we are predicting that this market will fall and I want to buy the deep, I will not just buy the moment it starts falling. I will set out places for me to buy the deep. So I will know that if the market falls to this, I will buy. Let's say, let's say as at when this thing happened, the market was here. Let me highlight it. Let's say this was the last candle we saw. So this was the last candle. So as I did, these other candles have not been formed. And you're telling me to buy the deep. I will put places where I am going to buy the deep as one here. That's this zone where the market is currently. I will place it as a point where I will buy the deep. Now, if you got deep by B, I will also think of buying the deep here. Now, if you went deeper again, I will also place this point as a point where I'm going to buy the deep. Now, I will also come here and said, I am also going to buy the deep here. So on my chart, I'm analyzing this. So I already have this like trap waiting for the market to flow. So if you notice, market fell from here and got to this particular point. At this particular point, that becomes my deep number one. So what I will do is I will buy at that point because my trap was already there waiting for the market. So I will buy, I will buy here. And those who bought here made some scalping profit. So if you bought at this line, let's go to price range. If you bought at this line, that was a, 282 and right now price is approaching um price is approaching 284 now if you are spot trading and you use a thousand dollars to buy this obviously you should be in about 10 20 to 30 dollars profit in less than few hours this is one hour two hour and three hours so if they say buy the deep it doesn't mean just buy everything set a point where you want to buy now, what will not be expecting? Okay, if the market chooses to fall, so if this zone breaks, the next point I should be thinking of buying is here. So I will set my buy order here, pending order, waiting for the market to fall. So the moment the market falls here, I will wait for it and I will quickly buy with the mind of selling with the pullback. Now, for those who attended the class, I have explained in details what we mean by pullback and how the market moves. So if you miss the class, um, I'm sorry, but let me just try to um, explain how the market moves. Now you must understand this for you to be profitable. Now this is how the market moves. For an uptrending market, we have this. Now we have a correction. Now we have this. So, and we have this. This is for an uptrending market. Then obviously we should have another pullback. Then we should have another impulsive move. So if you want to make profit from this trade, you should not just enter the market at any point. However, you should be buying here the end of the pullback should be the places where you want to buy the market, the end of the pullback. And therefore, you should be think of selling here. That's for short-term profit. You should be think of selling here at this point. That's the end of the impulsive move before a possible retracement. You should be think of selling here. And you wait for the market to fall again to this zone. And you buy here with the mind that this trend will still do work. Well. 
we still continue. This is hard to treat. So when you see a falling market, don't just jump and buy. Now, the moment you see a market and you jump in to buy or to sell, you will be losing massively. But if you wait for the market to finish and think of buying at those impulsive pullback areas, you'll be in profit. So when they say buy the deep, what they mean is buy the pullback. So let's reverse it to a downtrending market because when we say buy the deep, we don't buy deep in an uptrending market. So this is a downtrending market. Now we'll have something like this. Now we'll also have something like this. Now we'll also have something like this. And we will have something like this. So when they say buy the deep, they're actually telling you to buy here, buy this zone, and buy this zone. Now, at this particular point, we should be expecting, let's see, we might get to see something like this. Then we might be seeing something like this. And finally, we will not see something like this. So the question will now be, who are the people who made money from this trade? They are the people who bought here. That's this zone. And those who bought here, that's this zone. So buying the deep is just a term we use to buy the fall. But I am telling you, do not buy all the falls. However, set a trap, wait for the fall to occur and buy. For example, the market is currently falling now. The market is currently falling as we speak. So if you're buying the deep, it should be temporary. This is weekend. So if you're buying this deep, it should be temporary unless you have plan of holding it for long. After a period of consolidation, like I just explained, what we have here is something like this. So what we have here is something like this. Obviously, we are now having this. So once this is complete and the rejection is confirmed, we should have this. That is what should play out unless this was a fake out. So when you're buying the dip, if you bought the dip at this particular point, it should be short term. So you should be thinking of selling after a period of time as determined by your profit. So you don't just buy the dip and hold and buy the dip and hold. Even though when it comes down to this particular point, you that bought here, you're already losing money. So for scalping, what you need to do is to quickly enter your trade, pick some targets and leave, wait for it to fall you confirm a possible reversal just like I drew here. So if I was buying the deep before I will not sell again is when I have seen a possible reversal. So if I see a reversal that has occurred, then I cannot say the market has started to go up. Now for an uptrending market, I'll need to see something like this. I'll continue with this chart. Let me Hello. Hello. Yeah. I'm coming. Hello, I'm, evening, sir. I'm coming, please. I'm I coming. What did you say? I want to see the class. I want to quickly ask a question or make a statement. Okay, go on. Go on. Yes, with regards to the signal you said, you talked about the ceremony. You know, in this part of the world, like the right issue. If the majority of us have ceremony, perhaps, I don't think that we be here. Uh, like all the signals you said, it's very unnecessary. They all played out the way we expected. So if we are using a profit and stop loss to help ensure the effect of some losses, I'm thinking. Okay, um, we lost him. We lost him. Let's continue. So if this was an uptrending market, this up, a high, a low, higher high, a high, another low, and high. Now at this particular point, the moment I see this, I would think of selling. Reason being that 
a head and shoulder has been confirmed and that is a reversal pattern. So I'll think of selling the market because I believe the market will not start coming down. So if you're buying the deep, you must ensure that you know points to buy the deep. You don't just buy every deep you see. There are points where you buy and take your profit. Don't just buy and hold unless you're a holder. Now, like I said the other day, I think that was on day two of the training, people who make money are not holders of coin. They are traders of coin. A holder doesn't make money like the way a trader does make money. And I am going to explain that again. As of January this year, BNB was about, um, is it 12, as of December, is it 12, 12, 11, $10 or so? so. At a February, I started buying BNB. And as at that time, um, February, March, BNB was $45 for one. It dropped to 39 and about 35 or so. And at that particular point, it was cheap to buy. And everybody bought, and they were saying BNB is a good coin. We should buy and hold, which is correct. We bought and held. Now let's look at the scenario of people that bought in January. Let me take you back to the chart. Let me think, change my time frame to monthly. And let me explain why holders lose money and traders make more. So this is my BNB chart. Please pardon my line. I try to use that to analyze my chart. So pardon them. I'm not going to remove them, please. Because they mean a lot to me. Now. This was formed in September last year. So let's look at, this was December. Okay, this was January this year. BNB was $46. So $46. Then at that January, it was 46. I think it got to, yeah, 46 as a day. Now at this particular point, people who had 10 BNB as at this particular point, what they used to buy that 10 BNB was just a small money. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing 46 times 10. That's the use $460 to acquire 10 BNB. Now, when BNB got to this point, that's the highest point it got. That was uh, 614. What you're going to be doing is 10 times 614. Now, that is $6,114. And what he used was $460. So you do $6,114 minus $460. That's $5,680 profit. That was those who bought and sold at this particular point. Now let's look at the other way. People who did not sell when it was 618, that was the highest point you got to. 644. Now, right now, BNB got to 214. And it got to, right now, it's trading at 39384. Now, that particular point, you discover that you lost money from here down here. But a wise person sold at this particular point. So, a wise person sold at this particular point. And now, if that wise person is buying at this particular point and BNB goes up, he has made more money than you that just had. So another thing that will make it to be profitable is not just to buy any coin and hold. You must determine the holding direction. So if you're holding any coin, you're going to be asking yourself, how long am I going to hold this coin? Will I hold it for one month? Will I hold it for six months? Will I hold it for one year? If you don't determine how long you're going to be holding your coin, you will just be a member of the holders association of coins and people like that don't really make more money. I'm not trying to discourage you from holding coins, but I want you to know that in trading, you must determine everything you want to do. You must determine everything you want to do. The same way you determine your take profit. If you are holding a coin, tell yourself, how long do I want to hold the coin? Don't be greedy. I'm going to talk about greed sooner. Don't be greedy. So the moment then we go to 614, wise person sold but at that particular point they were now waiting for it to get one thousand dollars because it has gotten towards 614 so the next target would have been what one thousand dollars and they start telling you one thousand dollars is possible one thousand dollars is possible 
And what happened? It fell. Obviously, it's going to go back up. So those who sold are already making double of yield ahead. So as a successful person, what you need to do is you don't just buy a coin and hold the only God knows when. What you need to do is determine how long you're going to be holding the coin. I repeat, you need to determine how long you're going to be holding the coin. For example, I want to buy this coin. Let's say Matish. I'll tell myself I'm buying Matish with the mind that I'm going to hold Matish for the next two months. So after two months, I don't care if the price goes up. I say that is wise trading. Now I have some coins I have. Let's say you bought in some coins and say these coins, I'm going to hold them for the next two years. When you do this to lock them in your wallet, you might even forget about the key, write them somewhere and move on. That will help you to do what? Not to sell off the coin when you force. Because there is also a disadvantage of trading and no holding. As a trader, you might even buy higher than those who have. Because when the market is pumping, you'll be thinking the market has left you behind. So at that particular point, you want to quickly jump in and buy. And you might buy, and unfortunately, you will bought at the highest point. So the advice here is, as you're holding a particular coin, determine how long you want to hold the coin. You don't just hold every coin till God knows when. You must determine how long you want to hold the coin. That's one. Then two, greed. Greed is the other thing I'm going to be talking about. A lot of traders are greedy. And it is greed that will make you never to be successful in this space. What is greed? This is greed. Explain. Now, greed is, you saw this coin move to 310. At that particular point, you waited for a pullback and it pulled back. Now, your take profit was 320. Now, it got to your take profit, which is 320. Now, two things going to happen there. It's either you decide to sell off at your take profit. Or you feel like, ah, my take profit was too small. This coin will still go up. Two things are going to happen. Your take profit was 220. Now I started buying the coin from 301. Now I go to 220. The first thing that will come to your mind is, let me take profit. So you close the trade here. Now the second thing that will come to your mind is, almost it's like this coin is still going up or, let me increase it. And unfortunately, you might enter the trade again and what you will see is down to 292. So greed means the moment your take profit is achieved, please close the trade and avoid looking at your exchange, your Binance app or anywhere you're trading. I beg of you, set target for yourself. The moment your target is achieved, close your trade. In fact, if you can uninstall the app for the moment, uninstall that app from your phone and move away from it because this trade, this market that came down to this particular point can actually do what? It can actually still go up and come down here. I feel like, wow, I'm, I thought as much. I should have stayed in this trade. Then you quickly jump in and buy. So you jump in and buy here. And the moment you jump in and buy, what happens? Market will now start coming down. And when market start coming down, you will lose and lose the initial profit you made. So that is never a good option. So for you to be successful, you must know how to manage your things. Now, how do you do that? As I explained in the one point I gave was, don't put yourself under unnecessary pressure by using your spare money. So when you use your spare money, you're not under any pressure. Now, the, another thing you can do that will help you to be successful in these cases, give yourself daily targets. Some traders give themselves daily target of $10, $50, $100, $1,000, $500. Some persons give as low as $5. So I'll tell myself my daily target is $5 per day. 
what that means is the moment I made five dollar, I will not, I should not click, not, not trade again. But sometimes you might discover that you made five dollar and you saw oh, well, today is a good deal. Let me make it six. Let me make it seven. And before you know, you will lose the five dollar and still lose about ten dollar on that day, because that trade can go against you. So set your it's daily target. Set your daily target, and once it is achieved, please do not trade further. Set your daily target, and once it is achieved, please do not trade further. So once your daily target is achieved, if the market like let it skyrocket to the moon level, another day is coming. So set your daily target. Once you met your daily target, do not trade further. Now, in as much as you're setting your daily target, you should not be greedy. You know yourself, you know your trading capital, that's the amount of money you can generate. You can give yourself, let's say you're trading on a $100 futures account, and you're giving your daily target to be $80 per day. It is achievable, but at some extent, I will not advise you to set that type of daily target. Reason being that because you want to make it eighty dollars daily, you have to increase your leverage and your risk. So the moment you increase your leverage and your risk, what that means is you can lose more than you will gain. So the pressure is on you to meet your daily target. So the moment your daily target is not met, you be under pressure to achieve it. Now there are some days where you should not trade. There are some days where you were not supposed to trade. So days like that, you were not supposed to trade. And there are some things that can make some days like that to be. When a market is consolidating, when a market is consolidating, do not trade a consolidating market. So let's say a consolidation is when the market is quiet. It's when the market is quiet. Do not trade it. So you don't trade a consolidating market. Let me show you an example of the consolidating market. Um, let's say, for example, if you look at this, just this area, this is one R chart. So if you notice, there is little or no volatility in this type of market. My friend will say it's forming beans, beans, bean sheep. So this kind of place, this type of market, don't, don't kill yourself, just leave it. This is activity, this is activity coming into the market. So in this type of market, and you have $80 daily profit to meet, you'll be under pressure to buy or to sell because you want to meet up your target. So your target should be realistic so that you don't force yourself to take in wrong trade. So another thing that will help you to be successful is set a very realistic target. Set a very realistic target. So your target should be looking at your account side. Can I achieve this at the end of the day? Can I be able to achieve this daily? If it's yes, set it. If it's no, don't leave it. Some person, their daily target is something that you give yourself $50 and your account size is 10 or $20. The question is, how can you use $10 to make 20 to $50 daily, it is possible. We need to understand that this is a financial market that is moved by a lot of things. And one of the things that will move the market can make it go against your direction. So as a trader, you need to manage your trading psychology to become profitable. And one of the ways you need to manage your psychology is when you set targets that are only achievable when you set target that are only achievable. So if you have a 20 or $50 future trading account, the best, the best daily target you can set for yourself will be five to $10 daily. So if you're doing five to $10 daily, it is very achievable. 5% of your equity is very achievable. So from your futures account of $50, it is very possible that you can make $5 at the end of the day. 
So you can take one, two, three trades that will give you $5 and you close it. But if you're trading with a balance of $50 and you're taking your daily target to be 80, it will put you under a lot of pressure. So you might use 20X and once market goes against you, you might liquidate the account in a minute. So please, please set daily target and ensure they are only realistic. That is one. Then another thing I also talk about is how to set your take profit and your stop loss. For those that actually follow through the class, I think we did some analysis. Yesterday was um, purely trading strategies. So today I want to show you how to set your take profit and your stop loss. Now, looking at the current market price of BNB now, if I am selling this market, let's say, yeah, let's say if I'm buying this market, I need to put my take profit at this particular zone. Here will be safe. That's this line. It will be safe for me to put my take profit. Sorry, my stop loss. Whereas my take profit should be in ranges. So I can say take profit one and take profit two. So I can put my take profit one to be here. Now I can put my take profit two to be here. This is mostly used by scalpers. My take profit two to be here. And my take profit three should be or could be this particular zone. So at that particular point, this becomes my take profit one, my take profit two, and my take profit three. So I have my TP one. So I have my TP one. I'll move it. This becomes my TP one. This is my TP one. Now I should also have my TP two. Then I will have my TP3. To be here. Now, what this means is the moment, because I am anticipating, for example, that price will go up. The moment it gets to 290, I want to first of all secure some profit I've made and sell off and possibly wait for a pullback to buy again here. Now, with this pullback, I believe the next price should take me to my take profit too. And now once you get to my take profit too, I should sell off and wait for a possible pullback. Now the next move again, impulsive move should take me to my take profit three. So the moment it gets to my take profit three, I should sell off and wait. That is if you're setting your take profit. So it must be realistic. You cannot say you're trading futures and your take profit is, let's say the market now is 284, and you're putting your take profit to be $500. It looks very, very unrealistic, though it is possible. It is only possible when you have a bigger account side and you're swing trading. So you can hold your position for days and months. But I would advise, like I told my student, do not future trade for a longer period of time. I repeat, when you're trading futures, don't intend to hold it for a longer period of time. If you're trading spot, you can hold it for months, for years. That is fine because you only get to lose the value of your cryptocurrency and not your money. But for futures, don't take it for long. It is not your market. So a lot of factors can happen and you might lose your money. So these are how to take your take profit. Now, how do you determine your Excel? You de determine your Excel by looking at the zone that if price comes down to touch, then it will invalidate this analysis. So anything that makes price to break this zone, it means this analysis was wrong. So it means price should be headed down. So if price breaks this zone, this particular zone, because it can come back and retouch here. Now, if it breaks this zone, give it some allowance. Now, if it touches here, then it means price is obviously gonna go down. So how do you now determine how to take your um, how to set your your ratio? So you look at where you're entering from. Let's say you're entering from this 
280. At that particular point, you now say, okay, where is my take profit? My take profit three is where? 299, let me increase it to 300, 300. Now my stop loss is where? My stop loss is, my stop loss is here. That's 276. So at that particular point, if you discover, look at the ratio. The ratio here is very simple. Your take profit is about, we give you about what? It will give you 6.45%. Whereas your stop loss will make you lose about what? Uh, your stop loss will make you lose about what? About 1.5%. Check. Check these uh, position settings, please. It seems to be... What did you say? Check these uh, position settings, it seems to be wrong. I think we are targeting up. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, sorry, I choose I choose the sell position. So this is a buy. Okay, so you if you're using trading view, what you need to do is to come here, is to come here. Since we are longing, you click on long. Now, once you click on long, you choose. So if you look at this, now you're buying from, You're buying from this zone and you have this take profit. So if you look at the ratio, the ratio here is your buy should give you about 6.4%, whereas your take your stop loss should give you about 1.76%. At that particular point, it is safe. However, some person make a mistake of using this type of take profit. So this is their entry. Now this is their take profit. Now this is their stop loss. So if you look at it, your stop loss is actually what? It's actually uh, greater or longer than your take profit. That means you're trying to lose plenty money just to gain a few percent of money, which is wrong. So the right thing should be your take profit should always be what? Your take profit should always be longer than your stop loss. So if you look at this particular one, you're willing to lose 4.38% to win 2.13%. So that will not be profitable. So you must know how to set your take profit. Now, there are two ways you can make profit from trading your take profit. We one is in as much as your take profit is this zone, that's 290. If price gets to 287, you can close. So you don't wait for it to fall to 290. You can close. And obviously, price will come down a bit. Let's say you close at 287. Price will come down a bit. Let's say 286, 285. You buy again. You ride it till it gets to 290. You close. You wait for it to come down a bit. You buy. You enter. Then you ride it till it gets to that particular point. You close. That's one way you can do that. Now, another way you can do that is just to put your stake profit. You leave the market and you go back. Look at what I was analyzing. I told you we're going to have a pullback. It's already going back. Now, there's a place where I'm expecting this to end. The moment that point reach, market should fall back unless a reversal sign has been confirmed. So let me look at this and show you what I mean. So what happened was, BNB fell, market generally fell to this point. So what we are having here should be a pullback by what I've been explaining. So we should be expecting the market to do what? To fall back down. We should be expecting the market to fall back down. I'm falling issue four to somewhere around here. That's 270, about 280, 278 zone. That is one case scenario. Now, however, if market wants to reverse, we should be expecting to have a double bottom here. So market will come down here. Instead of breaking this zone, this zone will hold and we'll see a reversal. At that particular point, we know that, okay, we spotted a reversal sign here. So because we spotted the reversal sign, then it's not going to fall again. That is on one hour. But if we go over to four hours to see what might actually play out, we might get to see something different. So if you are looking at four hours here, 
Okay, looking at four hours here, what we are seeing here is a market that is pulling back a bit. So at that particular point, I'm not gonna be treating this as a strategy. I'm not gonna be explaining this again, but just know that we're having a possible pullback and this is weekend. So market might likely go back down, except a good fundamental comes and the market will go up. So what you should be doing at this particular point, if you're buying, you look for short-term buy option. If you're selling, you look for what? For longer time sell option. So that's how to use your take profit to determine your trade. So please, like I said, first thing you should do is use your spare money. But I don't think there's anything like call spare money in this part of the world. Not because there's no spare money, but because all our monies are engaged. All our monies are engaged. We need money for everything. So if you want to trade, set out some amount of money for trading. That money should be called your spare money. That means you should be willing to lose that money without complaining. So if you lose the money, it goes. If he wins the money, it's better. That is rule number one. Now, rule number two, what you need to do is ensure that when you enter a trade, avoid looking at it. You quickly grab your phone, you check. Let me see what is happening. You grab your phone, you check. What's in the, let me see what is happening. It might give you high blood pressure because the market, all it needs is for you to be profitable trader, you need to be 20% of trading. You need to be 20% of trading and 80% of patient. So the market needs 80% of patient from you and 20% of trading. So 20% of trading has to do with 20% of buying and selling and 80% of waiting. So you need to wait before you buy and sell. This is very important. You need to wait before you buy and sell. So it is when you waited, you've gotten confirmation. You cannot buy or sell. You don't just buy and sell without waiting. So if you keep checking your app, keep checking the market, you might be forced to sell when you are not supposed to sell or buy when you are not supposed to buy. So that is the way you can be profitable. Then the last thing I will say before um, I allow for questions and possible answer because this is the last day of our bootcamp. So I want everybody to feel free to ask their questions and some other contributions as well. The next thing is please and please, for you to be profitable, there is only way you can be profitable. That is accountability. And we'll talk about accountability. We're talking about records. So for you to be profitable, you must keep records. Now the question will now be, how do I keep record? If you're trading a future account, you can set target. Let's say you had $50 deposit. You can say, okay, my mind or my plan is to do what? My plan is to grow the account to $100 at the end of the month. That is your target. So what happens? What happens is any money you make, you can either leave it in the wallet. That's one option. You leave it in the wallet till you grow it to $100. But the one I will advise is, if you want to fund your account with $50 futures and your daily target is $10, the moment you made your daily target of $10, please move your profit from your trading account. The reason why you're doing that is because at the end of the month, that is where you can be what held accountable for your trading success. Move your profit from your trading account because sometimes you might lose your capital and still lose your profit. So move your profit from your futures account, keep it in a spot account, separate wallet. Now at the end of the month, you cannot go back to do what balancing and you will not see how much you need and how much you lost. So that's the way you can be profitable. Like I told my student, cryptocurrency you have in your wallet doesn't determine your, your, your value. What determines your value is the amount of stable coin you have. I repeat that. I have one Bitcoin today. Doesn't mean my watch is about 30. One Bitcoin is $32,000. Doesn't mean my watch is $32,000, no. What that means is I have something that is currently at 32,000 or that currently worth $32,000. That's what it means. But tomorrow I might be watching $30,000. Because if Bitcoin falls, then I will be watching $30,000. Now, next tomorrow, if Bitcoin increases, I might be watching $35,000. So your watch is not fixed. 
So you can now use an unfixed value to determine your financial worth. But what you can use to determine your financial worth is the stable coin you have. So you should be more friendly with your stable coins than your cryptocurrencies. However, you use your cryptocurrencies to get your stables. So what you mean is when you see a profitable signal or setup, what you need to do is to buy, make your profit, convert your profit to a stable coin and keep because it is a stable coin that is your own, not the cryptocurrency that you have because the value of that cryptocurrency can depreciate and you will lose money. But stable coins do not depreciate in value. So at this particular point, I want to thank you all. Um, I believe I've been able to say one or two things that will help our trading history to make us profitable. So I'll open the floor for questions and answers. So please, if you have any questions, you can now Hello, sir. and ask. Hello, sir. Yes. So, uh, that's short position that green and red line you did is it only on trading view you can do it yeah yeah for now but well, maybe maybe the software you're using if they have it you can see it okay if i want to trade on maybe binance i can't just do it on binance i must do it on trading view no binance doesn't have it but you can use binance trading view to come to this page okay okay but trading view doesn't have its own account. No, you can log in and create your account. And start trading there. Uh, not like you're trading here. Mostly we use it for analysis, but you can also log in. You can partner with the broker and log in directly to your broker from here. But most of the time we use it for analysis and you go to Binance to place your trade. But you can also okay. log in from trading view directly to a broker, for, especially for those who are doing Forex. Okay, okay. Hello. Yes, please. Yeah, pertaining to the person that asked question just now, uh, if you update your binary application, you will be able to draw few lines over there for you to use the trend line, your support and resistance. So it works on binary. Just that you have a lot of tools to use on trading view. So that's why it is more better to buy now. So you can draw the put and resistance on Binance, okay? Yeah, that's true. That, that's what I just said. For Binance, you can eat your phone. There's train lines. Yes. There's horizontal, there's vertical. You can draw all of that. But that's phone. Phone will not give a, big, a bigger picture. But if you want trading view, yes. there's also Binance trading view. So from Binance, you can go straight to trading view. Paradise. Hello, Mr. Paradise. <laughs> He's actually painful. You can go on. Oh, sorry. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Mr. Prince View. Thank you. Um, is, um, how can we set, uh, can you repeat how to set a, a parameter? I didn't really get it. You did it, but I didn't get, I didn't get it. Then the second one is how to trade on a cold coin because I'm actually using cold coin. I've not been able to verify my Binance. Thank you. Okay, this is cold coin. You need to log in here. So you need to log in. Once you log in, it will take you to the trading platform. Now you can see your market here. You can see trades. If you're doing spot, if you're doing margin. Now, Coin also has a trading bot. The bot helps you to enter trades. The target should be profitable trade. That is that. Then if you want to do spot, you can click here to take you to the spot trading platform. Now, once you get to the spot trading platform, the same thing you would have done on Binance is what you should be doing here. So by so doing, you need to search the coin you want to trade. Let's say you want to trade, Cocoin has their own coin. Let's say you want to trade Bitcoin. You come here, once you finish loading, you search Bitcoin BTC. You should not be expecting to have Bitcoin BUS here because the BUS is a Binance USD. So you have Bitcoin USDT. Now, once you click on it, it takes you to the market where you want to buy, you can buy. In where you want to sell, you can also sell. So it's almost the same thing. But first thing first, you need to log in. I think KuCoin does not really have issues with verification. They have little or no challenge with verification. 
just do your email verification and maybe one or two things set your trading password so this is the KuCoin trading platform now the moment you see this is btc usdt so the chart once you finish loading you will see the chart that's the candle here so we have btc here this is the current price now this is where you can buy and sell this is where you can buy and sell it is not showing because i am not locked in so this should be a buy and this should be sell so the moment you see now this is your limit price this is your market price this is top limit price i think they have another um other two we have stop market too unfortunately binance does not have stop market for spot traders so for coupon doors so you can enter the price you want to buy here in usdt now enter the amount you want to buy that's bitcoin you can enter 50 percent 100 then you click on buy or sell the same thing applies here if i've logged in then you should not be seeing logged in here you should be seeing either a buy or either a sell now KuCoin will tell you to trade to create a trading password so before you execute a particular trade they will ask you to input your password so you can just log in this is spot any coin i want to buy or i want to search for i can just quickly look for it here once i've seen the coin all i need to do is to do what to click on my trade and it will come in and I either buy or either sell now let's go back to my take profit so for you to understand how to do take profit is you need to first of all know where is the nearest support and nearest resistance that is how to set your take profit so this is the nearest resistance with what i'm seeing here so if i'm taking my profit from this zone if i bought this point at this particular point that's 281 i will first of all have secured some profit at 285 if i'm scalping but this becomes the nearest point where i should be thinking of taking my profit that's almost 288 so i should be thinking of putting my take profit here so this becomes my take profit one now the next thing will now be where is the next nearest point i can take my profit to some persons will decide to choose here this is an individual they depend individual factor some person will decide to choose here why some persons will say their take profit will be here but i always advise have take profit one two three some person go as far as take profit six now this is my first take profit this is my second take profit this becomes my third take profit how did i determine it the nearest support tone resistance the nearest support tone resistance now this will now become my stop loss let's say i'm believing that price will come down let's say price will come down but this line should hold that's what i believe so let's say that I believe that price will do this and go back up. Then I will not put my stop loss here because if I put my stop loss here, the moment price comes down to touch this zone, it will take me out of the market and it will ride in my initial anticipated direction. So if for me to set my stop loss, I will now come some cent below this zone. So I might put here as my stop loss. The reason why I'm, I'm, I'm giving some allowance is because if price falls, there might be fake out. Fake out is you might get to see a good week. This is a week, that's a candle. You might see a week, this type of candle. So you might just see something like this, a very long week and a small body candle. Now this week alone can kiss your take profit. It can kiss your take profit. And if it kisses your take profit, then you are out of the market and it will see go in your anticipated direction. So this thing can come down here, yeah? kiss your, sorry, I mean stop loss, not take profit. Can come down, kiss your stop loss, take you out of the trade. So to avoid that, you try to move your stop loss a bit down than the zone where you're believing that price will hold. So if you believe that price will hold 278, then your stake profit can be 275. 276 as well as 277 so that's how to set your take profit now if you want to measure if what you did was actually correct reason being that your take profit should not should be 
greater than your stop loss, you will now confirm from your entry. So this is my entry and this is my take profit. That's take profit three. Now this becomes my stop loss. Now that particular point, looking at it, my take profit will give me 4.72%, while my stop loss should give me 3.74%. It is reasonable because your take profit is higher than your stop loss. However, many persons believe in the ratio of one is to two. What we mean by one is to two is your take profit should be two times your stop loss. So if my stop loss is 3.7, my take profit should be 3.7 times two. So that should give us about seven point something. So let me move it to eight. Let me just take it. So at this particular point, it is very, very fair because my stop loss should be half my take profit. That's how some persons trade. Some person goes ahead as far as trading one is to three. By one is to three, they move it like this. So if your stop loss is 1.5%, then your take profit should be around that kind of five percent. So if you notice, you have a small fragment for stop loss and a big fragment for take profit. So that is how to set your take profit. Next question, please. Yeah, okay. Hello, sir. Yeah, please go. Uh, please, uh, how can I don't know how to maybe when the when you set a take profit and the price is increasing, how do I change the take profit and be increasing it too? Okay, it depends. It depends on the platform you're using. Um, there are In finance. Two, yeah, there are ways you can do it. You can close and enter, which will not be fair to some extent. Now you can always adjust your take profit. By adjusting, let's say, for example, you were targeting 299. So this is the best way to trade it, 299. Now what you need to do is, the moment price gets to 295, that means 299 is sure. You move your exit to your entry. At that particular point, you've secured your profit. You move your exit to your entry. Now, you put your take profit to be here. Now, when price goes up again, you move your exit to your first take profit. So what you're doing here, you're actually riding the trade. So as long as the trade is going on, you're always going up. There's always going up. Now, you can also use Binance DOS, the trailing stop also. You can also use some of those things to actually trade your profit. So as it's going, it can always be adjusting. As it's going, it can always be adjusting. Then you can always edit your stop loss and your take profit too. So you don't have to close it. Once it gets to that point, you can adjust it. Then it gets to the other point, you can also adjust it too. But some traders will close first. That one you made, first of all, take it. They will enter again. Some persons will not close. However, they will keep adjusting. Binance provides you that platform where you can always edit your take profit and ride along. But if you want to just stay in the trade, you can always ride your take profit. The moment price gets to your take profit one, you move your asset to your entry. What that means is if price comes down to test your entry, you have closed the trade. That means you're out of the trade, but you do not lose money. Now, when it comes to take profit two, you move your exit to your take profit one. So if price closes at that particular point, that means you made money at your take profit one. So you can close and enter or edit your profit. Next question, please. Shady, Shady one, your hand is raised up. Here's your question. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, that is something I want to understand. Okay. Consigning how to set your tech profit one and tech profit uh, up to one to three, it depends. But for example, if you set your take profit one, your take profit two, your take profit three, but when market went to your take profit one, does it mean that you're going to be out of the market? Oh, I don't really understand what you're trying to tell us there, sir. Okay, um, when I said set your take profit one, two, three, it doesn't mean you will put all these three values at the same time. They are, oh, okay. they are imaginary. Like you have it in your head. Let's see you've written it down. So you're thinking of leaving the market at this point. So you're not 
putting all of them inside the software at the, at same, the same time. One. Yes. So you already, okay, okay. from your analysis, you believe that price will get to this point. So it is now left for you and your grid level to either take, take profit yeah. one or take profit two or take profit three. So that's just what it means. Okay, so I guess I thank you very much. Welcome. Next question, please. Good evening, Mr. Paradise. Good evening, Mr. Paradise. It's not actually Mr. Paradise. This is Prince. Okay, thank you. Okay, my question is this. Okay. Okay, my question is this. When a market is trending, maybe in an uptrend and it it's going on uh, retracing, the retracement the retracement is called a corrective move. So why do you know that it's about to retrace such so that you can take your profit before it retraces? Thank you. That's that's I think I, I wanted to actually explain that and I did part of the explanation. It is called grid level. It is called grid level. Now this is it. Let me delete this in and explain how the market moves again. This is how the market moves. This is an uptrend. The market will go here. For example, we should expect a pullback. Now market will continue again. This is ID market movement. However, your grid level will not be, where can I see that this pullback will end? How will I know that this thing will end here? And this other pullback will end here. Because you want to buy at the what? At the highest, you want to buy at the lowest point and say at the highest point. How will I know, that's the question, that this thing that has been going up will stop here? will stop here and the pullback will occur. Now the question, how will I know where the pullback will stop before I will buy again? Now, the answer is two ways. You can know this thing from analysis. So you can actually analyze the market, not like you know, let me know if you want to know, you predict. So you can analyze the market and speculate, that's predict that this market will come and touch here. The same way I am predicting that this current BNB market should touch this line. And it has gone close to the line, but has not touched it at the movement. At this particular point, it is called a prediction. However, you should allow for zones. So you call it areas or zone. There might be possibility of this market not touching my line before going down, if it wants to go down. So to answer your question is, if you're trading an uptrend, now for you to know where the market will end, you should be thinking of possible indicators here. What I mean indicators, I'm not trying to say uh, stochastics, RS, I know. There are signs that this market will show you at this particular point, and you will know that, okay, you want to pull back a bit. That can be gotten from your knowledge of candlestick analysis, or if this point was a major resistance, now, if market touches a resistance, it must bend down. It must pull back down a bit. That's one. Now, the pullback, the question will be, how do I determine the length of the pullback? You cannot determine the entire, that's the full length of the pullback. However, you anticipate. Some persons will say the market will pull back 50% of the initial move. Some persons will tell you 45%. Some will say 30%. So we have plenty school of thought. But the best thing you need to do is to set at your own point yourself. Don't buy, if you want to buy, if you're sure of entering the trade, if you buy here, it will be fine. If you buy here, it is luck for you. If you buy here too, it is also work good because you still bought. But sometimes you can wait to buy here. That's this zone. You can wait to buy here. And the market will never get there. Market will just pull back here. And the next thing will continue. And this, your trade becomes steep ending. So rule number one, or answer number one, you need to what, do your analysis and look out for areas of influence where market can come down a bit or go up. Then the second one, which is the safest, don't wait to buy at the lowest point because at times the market will not tell you the lowest point where it will stop. However, buy after some certain parameters have been confirmed. So that's that for that particular question. 
Some person will tell you, for example, when BNB was pumping, they said initially they said hundred dollars for sure. We got to hundred dollars. It did not stop at hundred dollars. Abu, it went to two hundred dollars. It did not stop at two hundred dollars. We got to six hundred dollars. Greed did not allow people to sell. People were saying one thousand dollars, one thousand dollars, and it fell from six hundred and seventy dollars to where right now we are battling with two hundred and something. So at that particular point, it will be very hard for you to know where BNB will get to before falling because it has made high time, all time high. Now, if a coin has not made all time high, you can look at the previous data to know where it will get to. But a coin whereby it has made all time high, you don't have any previous data for all time high. So at that point, you are working at the mercy of fundamentals and some other factors. So the best thing for you to do, set your target. Once your target hits, Either leave the market or you stay in. Next question, please. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Any other question? Okay, any other question, please? Um, you can ask now before I will end the class for tonight. So once again, I want to thank you all for um, participating in the bootcamp. Like you said, the class or the training has not ended, though it has ended officially. But all participants have been added to the VIP signal group and we started riding in profit. We started taking signals. Signals were dropped today. They were dropped yesterday. And they might be dropped tomorrow or later this night. And another secret I will need to tell you for staying with me up to now is for Nigerians, please, the market moves in the night. So a lot of wise persons do not sleep around 12, 1, and 2, because at that particular point, there tends to be activity in the market. Time zone difference can play a crucial factor with that. So if you want to trade some time, you can sleep in the afternoon so that you'll be awake till 12 or 1 to actually know how the market is moving so there are most most of the time there is activity in the market around 12 1 and 2 o'clock so you can always wake up come down to look at it and go back to sleep so thank you all for joining the boot camp um i believe yes, you sir. Very... good evening sir okay good evening oh, sir good evening Please, good i just evening. want to ask the the training you do for two and a half months which which includes a uh, mentorship and a uh, signal group is this still ongoing? Like, do you still do it? The one of the beginners and advanced and a mentorship. Do, is this still ongoing, sir? Uh, yeah, I'll be starting my new class August second. August second, the new class will start. In okay, sir. So I, I hope I will be able. I will. I will join when it's time, please. No problem. Just send me a message on WhatsApp on the line. Just send the message. Okay. Sir. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, thank you very much for participating. For those who participated in the book camp. I believe we have a very nice time. I'm going to be sending you Google evaluation form. That's training evaluation form. Let me get to hear from you. Tell me the areas you enjoy the most and possible areas for continuous improvement. Um, this was actually an idea that came and it was the first of its kind. I'm also waiting for other ideas as well as time will allow. So thank you. Um, the training doesn't end here. We, your mentorship continues. Your mentorship still continues. So if you have any question, any day, any time, just drop the message for me on WhatsApp. Once I come online, I will answer them. Now, you're always in the Signal group, at least for a month. The reason why I added to the Signal group is for you to make, at least recover your capital, especially for the beginner student. So for beginners, while you're still reading or learning, I want you to first of all recover your capital from my own signals. And we've started that. So the signals will be for futures and for sports. And I'm going to guide you to we'll make it at the end. So one thing is guaranteed. Success is guaranteed. So thank you all for participating. Hello, sir. OK. Hello, Maybe. sir. Sorry, sir. Please, I'm not, I've not been added to. So I'm sorry. I, I have no idea about the group, the signal group. So I just want to say that. Um, I don't know, maybe I missed out on something, but I'm not on the signal group. I just want to ship that in. Okay, send me a message on WhatsApp. Just send me a private message on WhatsApp. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, Gosson, Gosson, you have a question. Last one, please. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Princeway. Um, my 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 dilemma is the issue of calculating profit and loss before entering a future trade. Like for instance, in forest, you can actually calculate how much you stand to lose. Yeah. By the place you want your stop loss to be. For instance, if, if, if you, you, you analyze a, 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 a sorry, you, you analyze a currency, you, you place your stop loss and your take profit, then now from there you can you can calculate how many you can lose, how many, how, uh, how many dollars you can lose and how many dollars you can gain. Yeah. For the case of these futures, you have to be in the trade first to actually understand this. And most of the time, most of the time when you put this um when you put this stop loss and you now you now find that your liquidation price is above your stop loss it now gives you the problem that ah my stop loss is way beyond the dream price that means say i might not have the ability to or the the, the space to actually wait around to to confirm that probably the, the, before the trade could, could hit the stop loss i'll make profit you'll be depleted out because your liquidation is way above your your stop loss point. So I don't know, is there any, any pattern to calculate these things before you actually enter the trade to actually know that, okay, if my stop loss is here, that means I will only lose this amount of money. You understand, based on the percentage, based on the uh, on the leverage you are taking, that leverage, because most times when you calculate it, when you put your leverage, your leverage gives you a different calculation. Yeah, based on the leverage, you want to take 20% leverage. Uh, okay. Thank you. I understand your question. Unfortunately, I am not logged in my Binance. Now, when you do, what you need to do is you can actually determine that using your Binance calculator, that's futures calculator, it's a bit hidden if you're using your phone. But you can go to your Binance, then there might be, you, you get to see some kind of an arrow. I think these are the top. Hello, Mr. Sorry, I was taken out of the Zoom meeting. I just came back now. Okay, okay. So um, I was saying, unfortunately, I am not logged in my Binance. So what you do, go to your features platform. Now there's a features calculator. There's a calculator. Binance helps you. The calculator is there for you to do this calculation. It might be a bit technical for you. So I'm not going to be taking that now because of time and I'm not logged into. But there's a calculator that Binance provides that helps you determine how much you are risking how much you stand to gain and how much you stand to lose. So go to the top right corner of your Binance app. That's your features platform. Then you might see, is it three dotted line or some lines too? I might likely send you some screenshots in the group. Then click on it, the calculator will pop up. You just input your values and actually know how much you should be expecting. So that's that. Hello, sir. Yeah. Like what that guy said, I'm having issues. Like, can you place a trade after seeing your liquidation price? You can now put your stop loss. You can place a trade. Once you place a trade, your liquidation price is fixed. Binance will show you. Now, after you've seen it, you can see go ahead and edit the trade and put your stop loss and your take profit. You can do that. But he was asking, can I determine how much I stand to lose or gain before placing the trade? So I don't want to be in the trade first before knowing where it would be my liquidation, how much I will make. But if you're in the trade, you can determine, you can set your take profit and your stop loss. That one is fixed. All you need please, to do is... Can you, please, can you... Unfortunately, I part? cannot show you here because I am not logged in in my Binance here. And this class is fast spent, so I cannot do that now. However, this is what I will do. Go to your Binance, go to Futures, if you're using your phone, input a trade, that's enter a trade. Now, once you're already in the trade, if you scroll down to where you're reading your profit, that's your percentage in profit in gain and your percentage in loss, you will see TL and XL is three dotted line or two dotted line, TL and XL click on it, it will come up. Then you will see take profit and you see stop loss. I will repeat. After you've entered the trade on futures, 
click on open order, not pending order. Now, once you click on open order, you will now see how much you're making in percentage and how much loss you are already in your trade. Now, beside that, you will see TL and you will see XL. It's after two dotted lines. Click on the dotted line, then input your take profit as well as your stop loss. I should also send you a screenshot in the WhatsApp group. For that. Okay, so I can send you a DM. No problem. Okay. So once again, yeah, thank you all for staying to. I believe we have a very nice time. And um, I want to appreciate you for joining the bootcamp. More opportunities will come. Like I said, we are going to be exposing you to other things too. And we are building a very, very strong community. So thank you. See you all soon. Thank you. Take care. And always be profitable. Thank Ensure you. you secure your profit. That is your own. Secure your profit first. Thank you and be profitable.